All right, everybody. It's time for Lesson 6 in Unit 6. Remember, Lesson 5 was just practice time uh, in class, which was awesome. So Lesson 6, we're looking at volumes of solids with known cross-sections. These will not be volumes of solids of revolution. These will be volumes of solids where we know what the cross-sections are, and we're going to put a whole bunch of them together and say, okay, let's imagine what the solid looks like. So problems of this type don't have an axis of rotation at all. They look like this. The base of a solid is the region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals 4, and the y-axis. Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Find the volume of the solid. So if we were to look at this region, the region is bounded by y equals x squared. It should technically say first quadrant region in the first quadrant, because there are two regions of that type. y equals x squared, y equals 4, and the y-axis. This is the region. This is the base of a solid. And so what that means is, every time we slice perpendicular to the x-axis, when we pull out a piece of this loaf, what we get is a wheat thin, where this is the bottom, this is the bottom. And so what we do is we, better, we get a whole bunch of wheat thins, we put them to, wheat thins, right, we get a whole bunch of wheat thins, we put them together, we stack them real close to each other, and we say, I can find volume because what I can do is I can say, okay, let's just make thinner and thinner wheat thins. We know that delta x is going to get closer and closer to zero. It's going to turn into an integral. We know how this goes. Now, here's the thing about that. It's really hard to envision. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to draw this three-dimensionally. This is going to go very, very badly, but we're going to give it a go anyway. This is y equals 4. So I'm going to sort of try to look at the solid from above, sort of. When I make a slice close to the y-axis, the wheat thin is rather large. When I make a, a slice toward the middle, the wheat thin is, is fairly large, and when I make a slice toward the end, there's not much of a wheat thin at all. But everywhere I slice, if I slice perpendicular to the x-axis, I pull that slice out of the loaf. You can't see me actually pulling the slice out of the loaf with my hands, but whatever. That is a wheat thin. And so the question is, what is the volume of a wheat thin? And the volume of a wheat thin is length squared times height. And the height's a teeny tiny change in x. So what is the length? How big is your bottom? Well, your bottom runs from 4 to x squared. It runs from y equals 4 down to y equals x squared. That is your bottom, right there, for x squared. That's it. And so if I stack a whole bunch of wheat thins together, and I make them infinitesimally thin, and I have infinitely many of them, then as delta x gets closer and closer to zero, or the number of wheat thins gets larger and larger and larger, I get the volume of a solid with a known cross-section. I'm going to integrate from zero to two, because that's two. Whatever the volume of the wheat thin is, but delta x becomes dx. That's the idea. 
No pie, because we're not dealing with tuna cans. It's just whatever the volume of the wheat thin is integrated across the interval. That's it. So then what happens is all fundamental theorem part two. This is a FOIL problem. Can't do U sub. So you've got to expand. And then you say, I know how to find that antiderivative. from 0 to 2, I'll sub in the 0, you sub in the 2, good. That's it. Well, let me change the problem ever so slightly. The base of a solid is the region in the first quadrant bounded by y equals x squared, y equals 4, and the y-axis. Cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis are squares. So, Again, you've got y equals 4, you've got y equals x squared, and you've got the y-axis. But this time, we're not slicing perpendicular to the x-axis, we're slicing perpendicular to the y-axis. And every time you slice perpendicular to the y-axis, you get a wheat thin. A wheat thin, a wheat thin. And the wheat thins are fatter at the top, thinner at the bottom. And so you've got this solid made up entirely of wheat thins. I want to find the volume of that solid, which means I have to know what the volume of a wheat thin is. The volume of a wheat thin, well, it's square with a thickness. The thickness is a teeny tiny change in y. Well, how big is the bottom? Well, the bottom runs from x equals 0 to x equals square root of y. So the volume of a wheat thin is square root of y squared dy. And we're going to say, as the number of wheat thins gets infinitely large, the volume is an integral from 0 to 4, because those are y values, of square root of y squared dy. Well, I know how to do that. Square root of y squared is y, so I get 1 half y squared evaluated between 0 and 4, and that's 8. I will ask you to notice that that is not the same answer we got for the first problem because we took different cross-sectional slices. Different. Okay. Base of a solid is the region bounded by y equals 1 minus x over 2, y equals x over 2 minus 1, and the y-axis, which means... 1 minus x over 2 looks like this. y equals x over 2 minus 1 looks like this. And the y-axis, of course, looks like this. Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are equilateral triangles with one side in the xy plane. This is an impossible thing to draw. So when I slice perpendicular to the x-axis, that's one side of an equilateral triangle that comes off the page. One side of an equilateral triangle that comes off the page. One side of an equilateral triangle that comes off the page. If it helps, you get some region. Uh, you can see it over here. That's your region. Um, but your solid looks like this thing over here. You've got cross-sectional slices that are always equilateral triangles. And so you have to ask yourself, self, what is the volume of, well, I guess those would be Doritos. I need the volume of a Dorito. And the volume of a Dorito is side squared radical 3 over 4. That's just the way equilateral triangles go. Side squared radical 3 over 4 times a teeny tiny change in x. So 
how big is the side? It runs from the red curve down. Oh, it runs from the red curve down to the blue curve. So we just subtract the red equation minus the blue equation. 1 minus negative 1, negative x over 2 minus another x over 2, just red curve minus blue curve is 2 minus x. So the volume is going to be an integral from 0 to 2 of whatever the volume of a Dorito is. And the volume of a Dorito is 2 minus x squared radical 3 over 4 delta x becomes dx. So how does that work? Well, that's radical 3 over 4. Just let that pass right through the membrane. 4 minus 4x plus x squared dx. And so we take an antiderivative sub, sub, and subtract. And that happens to be, let's see, sub into, that's 8 minus 8 plus 8 thirds minus what you get when you sub in 0. And that's 2 radical 3 over 3. All right. I'm going one more. I'm going one more. Base of a solid is the region bounded by y equals sine x and y equals negative sine x from x equals 0 to x equals pi. Sine x, negative sine x from x equals 0 to x equals pi. Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles with diameters connecting the graphs. What I need is the volume of half a Ritz cracker. Anybody else hungry? I'm totally hungry right now. It, what I need is the volume of half a Ritz cracker. Now that's not as hard as you'd think because a Ritz cracker is a semicircle times a thickness. It's a semicircle, pi over 2, r squared. Well, this whole diameter is 2 sine x, so the radius is 1 sine x. Oh, that's beautiful. So I take all these half Ritz crackers and I line them up and I make them infinitesimally thin and I get an integral from 0 to pi of pi over 2 r squared thickness. And your calculator will tell you to three decimal places that that's your volume. So hopefully what you'll notice as we practice is that these are the same things over and over and over again. If you can recognize that these problems run exactly the same way over and over and over again, you are in great shape. Okay, so that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.